Question 10. Given the graphs of f of x and g of x below, sketch the graph of f of x minus g of x. So the first thing that I would suggest that we do when we get a computer-generated graph is to do a better job labeling. As you can see on the scale right now, we, only, we can see that there's a scale of 1, but there's no other numbers present. So what we want to do is we want to label with the other numbers. So this is 2. Switch over the red here. So this is 2. This is 3. And that's about as far as I need to go for that graph. I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. And I'm going to label the rest of the y as well. This is negative 1, negative 2, uh, 2, 3, 4. So if we clearly want to label these endpoints, because I'm sure these endpoints are important, this is 2, 4, and this is negative 4, negative 2. So in order to find the difference, what we really got to understand is we're finding the difference of the y values. f of x represents the y value in the first graph, and g of x represents the y value in the second graph. So before I move on to the second graph, I'm just going to grab all the y values that I have. So my x values, uh, which I know, but my x values range from negative 4 to positive 2. So negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And then I go 0, 1, and 2. So now I'm just going to grab the y values. So with the negative 4, so this is f of x, uh, belongs negative 2. Uh, when, okay, and it seems like it just has a slope of 1, so this is negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So just to make sure, yeah, 2, 4 is where it stops, so that's good. So in a similar way, I'm going to want to find all the y values for g of x. And I start by doing a clearly labeled graph. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Whoops. Uh, back to question 7. And we go uh, 2, 3, uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, well, which we don't really need. 1, 2, 3, 4. So just some important points here are negative 4, comma 3. Um, you can see 0, negative 1 right there. 0, negative 1, uh, that's the x-intercept, and then we have a 4, and we're going to go up a little bit higher, it looks like we have a 4, comma 5 as our endpoint. So I just want to get the y values for this graph. So negative 4, uh, it is a 3, and See, you can see it just decreases by 1. So this is nice. 2. When it gets to negative 2, it would be 1. And negative 1 is 0, right? Negative 1 and 0 right here. Now it's increasing by 1. So at 0, it's 1. Then it's 2 at 1. And then I'm assuming it's 3. And then the graph goes on, goes 3 and 4. So I'll write this in just for the time being. 3 and 4. Right, our other graph doesn't have anything. This graph at 3 goes up to 4, and at 4 it goes up to 5. Um, so I didn't really need to put in those last two values because I cannot subtract 4 from nothing. So my resulting graph is really only only going to be defined from negative 4 to positive 2, which is your most limiting domain. So the easy part now, I think it's the easy part, is just to subtract these two numbers. So we want to get order important. f of x minus g of x. 
So if we go f of x minus g of x, negative 2 subtract 3, got to be careful with that, the subtraction is in the equation, is negative 5, this will be negative 3, uh, 0 subtract 1 is negative 1, 1 subtract 0 is 1, 2 subtract 1 is 1, 3 subtract 2 is 1, that's interesting, and 4 subtract 3 is 1. So we got some kind of leveling graph here. So now we just want to label these points. And again, in order to label these points, let's first do a better job of labeling our axis so we can see what we're doing. Negative 1. Switch over to red here. Negative 1. Negative 2. Negative 3. Negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's see. We've got to go down quite a ways. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And then here we I think we only need to go to 2. So let's make sure. So negative 4 is a negative 5. So negative 4 is a negative 5. Negative 3 is a negative 3 and negative 1 is a 1 um, sorry uh, negative 2 is a 1 negative 1 it should look linear if, if we're subtracting two linear functions and then at negative 1 we get a 1 So negative 1 is a positive 1. 0 is a positive 1. And you can see this graph is leveled out now. And 1 is a 1. And finally, 2 is a 1. So this graph uh, makes a straight line. Uh, should I say a diagonal line? So how does this line, how does this graph go? Let's see if we could get a nice line here. So it makes, it makes, and, and we gotta make sure we use a straight line, like a, so it goes like this, and then it goes, it stops, and then it goes straight. I'm learning to use a new tool here. And you can see uh, it didn't work out that nice. <laughs> Try that again. There we go. That uh, should be level. All right, that's going to have to do. All right, so my curve is in yellow. I apologize for the way that some of these lines work, but uh, it's just the way the display is. So if we look at this, let's see if it makes sense. Uh, well, I could see why it kind of makes sense on the right side of the graph because it's pretty much the same slope. So when we subtract y values, we're going to get a constant. And that constant that looks like is 1. This graph is one unit higher than that graph. So when we subtract, you know, when we subtract this part, this lower part from the original graph, the f of x, we would get a constant of 1 because the y values differ by height of 1. So that's neat. The other part of this is a little harder to visualize, but you can see um, they do subtract to give you a line segment as well. Basically, when you add and subtract diagonal line segments, you're going to get nice constant shapes. So that is it for this question. Um, you know, you don't need to take all of these points, but uh, it certainly helps when you take more points.